John Moore is not your average photographer. Since the early 1990s, he has traveled to some of the world's most dangerous places to cover stories for Getty Images, an American photo agency. He has covered the conflicts in Somalia, Bosnia, the Congo, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Unfortunately, the most recent conflict that he has covered, the civil war in Libya, was different. They were near the front line, and there were mortars being fired, and there was a battle raging. And um, I, I would never say that they got too close. I would say that they were unlucky. Um, it could happen to any of us. On April 20th, one of Moore's friends at Getty Images, Chris Hondros, was killed by an RPG. Although the danger of conflict journalism is widely acknowledged, it is unusual for such a prominent and experienced journalist to be killed. Despite the dangerous consequences of his profession, Moore believes it is necessary to shed light on the conflicts in the Middle East. He remembers Hondros as one of the best and smartest photographers in the business. He had covered conflict in Iraq and Afghanistan, Liberia, and, and many other places uh, around the world uh, throughout his career, even more so than me. He was part of our sort of photo philosophers um, in this profession. He thought about the consequences of his pictures. He thought very strongly that we needed to be covering these conflicts because without them, they would happen out of the public eye, and that was just completely unacceptable to him. He went back repeatedly to some of the most dangerous parts of the world, and, um, and uh, we'll all miss him. The same RPG that hit Chris Hondros on April 20th also killed Tim Hetherington, a British filmmaker who directed the Oscar-nominated documentary Restrepo about a U.S. military unit in Afghanistan. According to Moore, Hondros and Hetherington were not taking any unnecessary risks when the fatal RPG struck. Chris was very smart at, at what he did. When he and Tim Hetherington were killed in Nisrata, in sort of central western Libya, um, they were moving along the street, and they were doing everything right. Uh, I don't think they were taking any, any crazy risks. They were doing their job, and, uh, and it still happens to even the best in this business. Moore believes that the incident demonstrates that it often doesn't matter how experienced a journalist is or how close they are to the front line. It seems the random chaos of conflict can harm even the most trained and the most knowledgeable war journalists. I've been in conflict zones once, for instance, in Iraq, where I was in a frontline situation, and some journalists five miles back behind me in the rear were killed by a rocket. And so there's no real safety when you're in a conflict zone like that. You try to manage the risk the best you can, but... Um, but ultimately, there's a there's a matter of a matter of luck and, and destiny involved, and uh, sometimes you just never know. The deaths of Hondros and Hetherington evoked a profound reaction from the journalist community. The two photographers are the most influential and most accomplished journalists to be killed in recent years. Moore says the U.S. media has been very lucky throughout the conflicts in the Middle East. Since 9/11, we've been covering wars constantly, and very few Western photojournalists. Um, and certainly American photojournalists have been killed. Um, a lot of photojournalists and, and reporters working uh, locally uh, in Iraq, uh, Iraqi photographers, Afghan photographers, Algerian reporters and photographers have been killed over these years. But in terms of people that I've known and people that I'm close to have known um, from the U.S. press corps, we've been very lucky. As a result, the deaths had a large impact at Moore's photo agency. When this hit, it was, uh, it was very tough for a lot of us. And it was really especially tough uh, for those of us at Getty Images because uh, we're very close to Chris. Um, he's a colleague, he's a friend, and he's one of the best in the business. The fact that these deaths occurred in Libya is significant. During his trip to Libya, Moore discovered the conflict zone was different from those in which he had previously worked. In Afghanistan, for instance, Moore was generally embedded with the U.S. military, who provided him with food, water, and transportation. In Libya, there are no U.S. troops on the ground to offer their protection. You travel into rebel-held territory, usually from Egypt, at least that was in my case, and then you work along the front lines, and you are really, in many ways, on your own. When I was there, the rebels were not really controlling us that much. You, you could move around at will. Uh, these days, they set up checkpoints, and it's harder for journalists to get frontline access. But at the time, it was really up to us, and so traveling towards a frontline area, you would go with great caution. While journalists in Libya can more easily access the story due to the nature of the conflict, there is a clear trade-off. The situation has been particularly dangerous for journalists and reporters. An unusually high number have been attacked, kidnapped, or killed. 
Moore believes that this is directly linked to the freedom that journalists are given. We really had total access to the front line, which was shifting very quickly on a daily basis back and forth. And so it was really, um, it was really important to be very careful and, and pay attention very closely as to which way the battles were, were headed. And, you know, and as such, when a front line shifts overnight when you're sleeping, then if you're too close, then, then you might be in trouble, which is the case uh, with a number of journalists who were captured. And so I think Libya has probably been more dangerous for us just because we've had so much complete frontline access the whole time. As a consequence, we've sometimes um, been closer than we, than we would have liked. Even though there are no U.S. troops on the ground to offer protection, Moore says that there are still precautions that journalists can take to avoid getting too close to the front line. For instance, you'd make sure that there were cars in front of you moving in that direction and that there were cars coming back towards you on the highway from the other directions. And I don't mean cars flashing their lights and waving their hands. I mean, the worst thing you can do is drive down a highway in the open desert in Libya with no cars going in front of you and no cars coming towards you. That way you have no idea what's going on. While the loss of Honduras serves as a reminder of the dangers of this sort of reporting, it will not change Moore's journalism career. He thinks that the role of a war journalist is as important as ever. Although the U.S. military is involved in multiple conflicts overseas, Americans, including many politicians, focus on domestic issues. Moore feels a sense of duty to tell the story that they are overlooking. We have 100,000 soldiers plus over there. I think it's really important for Americans to remember that we have folks there and that people are getting hurt and dying all the time. And it's easy uh, for people back home here who are going to the shopping mall and, and uh, living their lives uh, as normal, although dealing with the economy. Um, you know, people think a lot more about the economy than they do the, that we have two, well, two and a half, you could say, with Libya, wars going on at the same time. Moore thinks it is discouraging to many in the military that the American public isn't paying attention to its wars. Moore and other conflict journalists believe so strongly that the conflicts in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya should remain in the public discourse that they are willing to risk their lives to keep it there. When, when someone is killed um, in this profession, it's, it, it's very difficult on many different levels. And so um, everyone wants to make sure that's not repeated. Will it be eventually? Well, this is a tough business. Of course it will be. But we hope it's, uh, it's not for a long time, and we hope it's, uh, you know, we hope it's no one we know. You know? And it's, uh, it's tough. It's much tougher when it's someone you know. It's, it's just a fact. Making America pay attention to its own wars involves a lot of risk. It means journalists like Chris Hondros, Tim Hetherington, and even John Moore himself have to put their lives at stake. According to Moore, the mission is worth the risk. For War News Radio, I'm Stuart Russell.